Welcome all of you, the viewers of Berlin Daily Culture. Do you know how it is to be an artist in New York? And we have Margosia Malinowska with us in the studio who will answer this question because she knows it's from the first hand. Yes? Tell us, uh, please, thank you very much for coming. And tell us about this, your experience, which, you've talk, which we've talked a little bit in the previous episode, uh, how it is to be a young artist, especially Polish artist in New York. First of all, thank you for having me. And it's a nice question because it brings me back in time to my memories from New York. As I said in a previous episode, it's a totally different game. As an artist, you struggle on a daily basis. I was an art student, which puts it, it gave me a structure. So, you know, I would commute from my apartment to the studio, to our school. Uh, I had contact with many professors. Um, most of them were international teachers, which was also interesting. All of them had different views on art, on art market. And what they tried to do at my program, which was called Studio Art Intensive, run by uh, an Italian director, uh, was to prepare us for, um, uh, in my opinion, defending our artistic style, our artistic language in the future on the market. And that, that in my opinion, was very engaging and also great experience for me to to go to go through we had different uh, subject matters than then in uh, my academy in warsaw the the focus was to to, uh, to force us to to create in different medium so i graduated from a painting department in warsaw but in new york i had the chance to try a bit of sculpting in terracotta with a chinese teacher who hardly spoke english but he was an excellent teacher when it comes to sculpture and that's when i did my first terracotta sculptures they are at my home i love oh, them very cool. much yes. so you basically uh so you were shifting to different ways of being an artist. Yes, exactly. We, uh, the big part of my education there was a film class. Uh, that's where I learned how to edit films and did some uh, video art, which I was not interested at uh, before. But then I discovered that this is a great medium. And that's also a difference uh, in education when it comes to States or uh, UK, uh, then to our Polish education, which I have nothing against. I, I love our, my academy. When you want, in my opinion, if you want to be a painter, it's a great place to start. Really, Polish art academy. Well, after all, becoming a painter and learning all the techniques, it already takes few years. Done that. I mean, to be really professional in what you're doing and to know how to how to paint itself. Uh, with, Actually, especially by the... saying that, you you made me think of a quality which. I admire very much in good oil paintings. It's a quality. I aspire to have a good quality. I like my pieces to be precise and nicely defined. I don't want to do like, you know, just... Yeah, I think the good quality will like defend itself for years, even though the subjects, for example, can be less attractive, for example. But uh, isn't it like, for example, with the Wimbitska painting, she kind of disappeared from the... Uh, if uh, from the spectrum for many years due to the political reasons as well, but the quality of her paintings, even though we don't recognize the people right now, which on their paintings, who, which Vicomte or which another like p person from the life of Paris, it is. Mm -hmm. But the quality of the picture of the painting is so high that we still admire them. Funny you brought her up because I, sometimes I, I'm being compared to her, which is a great compliment. She was one of my favorites when I started. And years ago, I went for an art exchange, for a school exchange to Milan as a very, very young artist. I, I was 21 or 22 back then. And when Pisca was a ex huge exhibition back then in Milan, which I went to see, and I was like, oh, that's a good pathway for me to be on a, on a path to become a painter. Well, definitely, I would love if we in Poland had more Wim guys as well and going this this direction. But uh, coming back to new, your New York life, do you have any memory of a, like a special thing which you've learned to, during those times? Either like comparing yourself to other students? Oh, that's, that's an interesting question. I think my main memory of being 
of, of living in New York was not to compare yourself to anybody. You know, oh, you have to be your own person. Well, it's hard to do where you have so many uh, other creative people around and all of this uh, crowd also walking, going somewhere, being oh, busy well, that, all the time. That would, that would kill you. That's, that's the beauty of New York. You, don't, you are your own person if you like New York enough to, to, to go with that direction. You have to be your own person and that's when the city inspires you. Otherwise, it would just put you down. And Probably true, yes. because there's so many uh, inspiration, but also creative people there, and art, music, theater, uh, museums, business. You can't be everyone. That's true. But there's an exchange, you know. You're you're own, you're your own person. You bring something to the table, and others do too. And that's what I like about the states. Maybe I romanticize the states, but my memory is that people exchange. There is a there is a combination of everything and you always can find your own place among others. Well, this is a nice thing to put as a, uh, as a punchline to all of you as well. Uh, it seems like we don't really need to compete with other people, but sometimes they can just inspire us with something and bring something new, and then we can react to this with our art. That's the experience of Mongosha Malinowska. And of course, to you, the viewers of Pearland Daily, if you're interested in her paintings, go check her online and stay with us for another episode.